Hey guys, we dropped Chris Tomer here on this Friday. Let's talk some mountain weather to water vapor satellite first. Um, and our big high, our big winter killer is right there. And look at all of this dry, warm air and those oranges and those reds. This is up in the mid levels of the atmosphere. So what this thing is doing is it's like it's steering everything. <laughs> look at the flow. This is all of your moisture and it's basically being directed straight to the north up into Alaska. The issue is, and I was looking at Alaska this morning, is just how warm it is. I mean, they're even talking about rain mixing in with this at the base up there at Alaska. So it's pushing freezing levels up in Alaska. It's, it's just so warm. Um, in fact, let me, well, you can kind of see the flow. Let me draw the high again. I want to talk about the eastern periphery. So the flow is coming down on this side, and it's a fast, windy north flow on the eastern periphery of this high. So little disturbances are racing down or being escorted to the south on this. And so we're seeing them clip through parts of Montana, parts of Wyoming, and parts of Colorado, especially like right on the Front Range High Peaks and then down through Denver and the eastern plains. So a lot of wind and little teeny tiny disturbances with some snow for the Front Range High Peaks of these area of Colorado. Let me show you my bullet points. So we've got the winter killer up through the 21st, then late on the 21st through the 25th, a couple of different cold fronts will start to break down parts of this high pressure. But I will tell you, based on what I'm seeing this morning versus yesterday, it does look a little bit weaker to me overall with less snow, at least with this first surge between the 22nd and the 25th. Um, we talked about how warm it is out ahead of this, up to 12,000 foot freezing levels in the Pacific Northwest during the, the peak of the days, the heating of the days. Um, looking down the road, the 15-day snow totals, this is good to see 8 to 12 at a lot of these resorts. That's a 15-day total. A little bit of that comes with this first storm cycle, 22 through 25. Possibly a larger batch of that, a larger piece of that comes with a, uh, a secondary cycle around 26 through possibly the 30th. So it doesn't all happen initially. It's pr Some of that's probably gonna happen very late in the month as well. In fact, you can sort of plan it out like this with the timeline, best odds of snow, Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, the Pacific Northwest and Interior BC. Just as an example, the fast north flow delivers a very light snow accumulation in Colorado on the Front Range High Peaks late 16 into the morning of the 17th. Then there's a light batch, 23, 24, 25, and then a light to moderate batch later in the month, 27 and 28. In Utah, a little bit, late 22, 23, and then a bit more, 27, 28, and 29. For places like Idaho, it's you're gonna have to wait till probably later and really late for Tahoe, 28, 29, 30. I mean, so there's a serious waiting game going on here uh, for this uh, this high pressure to break and for the fronts to start to erode some of this, this high pressure. Let's look at the forecast radar. So we'll start this up at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard today. Um, and, and so you can kind of see at this point, there is a bit of a front running right in here. Let me put this into motion. Okay, so this is late tonight, Mountain Standard. This is 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Saturday, January 17th. So there's another little disturbance racing down from the north to kick off some wind and a little bit of snow over those, uh, those Front Range High Peaks of Colorado. Let's move ahead. Um, okay, so here's 11 a.m. Mountain Standard, and then we're dry again. Another little piece coming down. There's 11 a.m. Mountain Standard on Sunday, January 18th. So again, there's probably another front right in here. And that races through. There's late. Okay, there's that's 5 a.m. Mountain Standard on Monday, January 19th. And there's your front right there, kind of racing down through Colorado at that point, the front range of Colorado. Then that's out of here. And that was the final frame right there. Okay, let's go to uh, a bit of time height. So this is, let me change this, this text because this is Loveland Ski. Um, okay, so this is Loveland Ski Area's time height forecast. 
and this is a 72 hour forecast over so the next three days and essentially what you're looking at here there's your start there's time zero and then that's three days into the uh, the forecast period you're looking at a slice through the atmosphere and notice this green starts to increase that's our moisture late today this afternoon tonight and into the morning hours tomorrow that's I think the best chance of seeing maybe an inch of snow at Loveland a basin Keystone Winter Park Berthoud Pass Rocky Mountain National Park and also Cameron Pass and there's a lot of there's a wind envelope surrounding this so there's a lot of wind coming through with this and then there's like another little kink indicated right here late on the 18th into the morning of the 19th so these are little waves that kind of race south on this north this fast north flow all right looking at the atmospheric pressure anomalies this is the 21st this is wednesday so there's our fast north flow that continues still a lot of high pressure across the west all right here is the 24th now this is a pretty big shift right here by the 24th look at this drop in pressures across the west so a bit of a trough here and a dip in the jet with if this verifies colder air and some snow for the west especially the central and northern rockies all right this is the 26th now by the 26th this builds back some of the higher pressures with the trough now to the north and another trough swinging through the great lakes and the northeast so a fair amount of consistency with cold air and snow and lake effect for the northeast let's look at uh, what the ai comparison is for the 26th so operational we looked at that ai is in favor of even more high pressure by the 26th for the west so still a bit of disagreement ai has been uh, high pressure heavy the last few days across the west let's look at total precipitation so this is over the next eight to nine days and it is just bone dry across a lot of the west and you can see the uh, some of this precip dropping down on that fast north flow through montana wyoming and into colorado and it's not until very late into this 24 let's see 23 24 25 that a little bit of that actually makes it into makes its way into uh, Utah. Here's the 10 to 1 snow over the next 8 to 9 days. Again, you can almost draw a line through most of this uh, where most of the snow is on that line and to the east. But a teeny tiny bit makes it into Utah late in the period, more in Wyoming, more in Montana, more in Colorado. It's a really tough setup for the west. Let's look at the southwest. This is total precipitation over the next 8 to 9 days. It's extremely dry it's only very late in the period that we actually see a little bit of precip on the map here um, so here's your AI snow plume for Berthoud Pass in Jackson Hole Wyoming so this is a 15 day 10 to 15 day forecast so by late on the 30th the total accumulation is about 5 inches over Berthoud now Jackson's in much better shape this accumulates about 10 uh, by late on the 30th and most of this falls after the 22nd at uh, Jackson and after the 22nd at Berthoud Pass. Um, looking at my snow forecast, so phase one, basically today through the 21st, total snow during this time period. There's your fast north flow, um, escorting these little waves and wind through Mon parts of Montana, parts of Wyoming, and parts of Colorado, maybe an inch or two. Alieska, depending on your elevation, you're going to get about 10. Um, you got to go higher up on the mountain to get that. It's just so warm. Phase two. So this is 22 through 25. Now, this definitely does not look as good as it did yesterday or the day before. It's just, it, it, from this, it looks like it's just difficult for the fronts to make it further west it's like they they kind of hit this this wall and then that's it there's a little tiny bit that makes it into the wasatch but not a lot i mean you're looking at light accumulations here through montana wyoming parts of idaho light over colorado certainly lighter than yesterday when we were looking at this two three four five six inches and that's it this is through the 25th 22 through 25 
Okay, let's look at uh, the Northeast. Rolling accumulation over the next nine, eight to nine days. There's a couple of clippers and there's a lot of lake effects. So deep purple's at least six, bright pink would be a foot. Look at the lake effect right here off Ontario, some off of Erie and definitely some off of Lake Michigan as well. Um, there's not a lot of storm snow. Here's my forecast for uh, the time period of 116 through 125. I've got eight over Jay Peak, White Face, 10 at Snow Ridge, uh, seven at Mount Snow. Everybody else is less, three, four, five, six inches. But it does stay cold, and not all the snow comes at once, so you're going to get refreshers every few days. Let's go back to the west. Phase one, 116 through 121, not a lot. In some places, nothing. And then phase two, 22 through 25, is a little more active with a couple of cold fronts. But even there, we're not talking about big accumulations. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.